<laughs> Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support on Gun Guy TV. I'm very, very grateful for the support that you give us. By the way, we are not uh, YouTube dependent anymore, so you can find us on all of these wonderful places as well. One new one that we added is GunStreamer.com. It's a neat site. Check it out. I do encourage you to subscribe to at least one. That way, if something happens to us on YouTube, which is always possible, you'll know where Gun Guy TV has gone and where you can find our videos. We're not going to be pushed off of the internet. By the way, you can also check out the Gun Guy TV audio podcast on your favorite podcast player. And if you'd like to support a Gun Guy TV, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can do it on Patreon. You can shop Amazon using our Amazon link. You'll find all those links in the description. Okay, what I wanted to talk with you about today was basically to answer a bunch of questions sort of in one video. I've gotten a number of questions over the last several months asking me, for example, what do I carry every day as far as a concealed carry firearm? Because I can carry pretty much all over the United States with some exceptions because I have permits all over the place, including California. Uh, one of these days, hopefully, Congress will actually pass right to carry reciprocity, but that's a different subject. I've also been asked, which is my favorite knife? And that is going to be a, a subject of a lot of this video, and I'm going to show you why and explain to you why it's my favorite knife. And that's from the perspective of a guy who's a law enforcement and security instructor and also a martial arts instructor. So uh, I've been carrying... Uh, knives for a long time, guns for a long time, and I've been teaching it for a long time. My former business partner, Mike Ritz, far better at knives than I'll ever be, but uh, as one of his students, I can tell you I've learned a lot. Okay, now let, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me clear up what I carry every day, answer those questions, then I'm going to talk more about the knife. So on a daily basis when I'm out and about, because I live in Southern California, I live in San Diego County, California, I almost every day I'm carrying this little snubby revolver. This is a Taurus Model 85. It has a set of crimson trace laser grips on it, and I've painted with fluorescent paint uh, the sights so that I can see them at night. I've had this gun for a long, long, long time. I really like it. It's an all-steel gun. It's plus P capable, and I carry plus P uh, defensive ammo in it. The reason I carry it a lot is it's lumpy and bumpy and it hides really well uh, in cargo shorts. And I'm almost always, because I live in Southern California where it's nice weather or warm or hot or whatever, I'm almost always wearing, as I am now, t-shirt and cargo shorts and sneakers or flip-flops or something and a ball cap. So this goes in a pocket holster in my cargo shorts beautifully. And then I had a custom made, which I don't have, I had uh, George Bauer at GB Holsters make me a custom made speed loader holder that, to fit the specific speed loader for this. And that just snaps to my belt and I throw a speed strip in my other pocket and away I go. When I'm not carrying this gun, most of the time I'm carrying this one, which is my Smith & Wesson M&P Shield in 9mm. You'll notice it also has a Crimson Trace laser grip on it. Uh, I like this gun a lot. There's kind of a funny story behind this one. I bought it and I hadn't drossed it yet. And I said to my wife, you know, um, as I also bought a, a, uh, a Glock 43 from a buddy who's a law enforcement guy. He had a couple of them. He sold me one. And I told my wife, I said, well, pick the one you like the best. We'll put it on your permit and I'll take the other one. And she took it to the range, shot both of them and said, uh, I can't make up my mind. I want both of them. <laughs> and so I didn't get one. I had to buy another one. Similar story with the knife. So this is the one I bought for me. My wife has one as well, plus her Glock 43. And then if I'm not carrying either one of those, depending on how I'm dressed, if I'm wearing a sport coat or whatever, oftentimes I will carry my Springfield XD subcompact, and that is in 40 Smith & Wesson. So there's the guns that I carry. Now, there are times when I'm places where I cannot carry a gun. And that's probably you too, particularly if you're young. If you're younger than 21, you can't carry a gun because you couldn't get a permit or carry in a constitutional carry state anyway because you're not old enough. So if you're in a situation where you can't carry a gun or you're going someplace where you can't carry a gun, you have to carry something else, sometimes that is a knife. And in California, while it is challenging depending on the county you're in, it's very difficult to get a permit to carry a firearm, you can carry a knife. My kids, when they before they were old enough, always carried a knife, and I taught them how to use them. Knives are a very dangerous tool, and I'm going to show you more about that in a real-world scenario so that you can see. This is the knife that I carry most of the time. Now, in order, again, to continue answering the question, there are times when I cannot carry either. In case you don't know this, uh, hablo tres idiomas, inglés, español, Y dinero. I speak three languages, <laughs> English, Spanish, and money. <laughs> so everybody speaks money. And I, I'm in Mexico a lot because I live right on the border, and I grew up here, so I learned to speak Spanish here. And then I worked in Mexico for a couple of years where everybody I worked with spoke nothing but Spanish, so you kind of learn. My wife is Spanish and Mexican by descent, and so this is a language that's very familiar to me. 
I also go to Mexico for other things. My dentist is in Tijuana, for example. When I go to Mexico, I cannot take a gun and I cannot take a knife. However, I've been studying martial arts for a long, long, long time and teaching martial arts, so I'll generally take my pen. I have a couple of these. This is just a cross aluminum pen. It allows me to do magical things like write a note <laughs> or keep track of things if I want to write down something. But at the same time, because it's a, it's a good tool for uh, stabbing if necessary, I could enlist this in my defense if I had to. Not the best thing, but again, I'm in a, in a country where I can't carry a gun or a knife, though I carry the, the pen. And I don't want to find myself inside a Mexican prison, so I, I really try to avoid violence or avoid confrontation at all. I do that in the United States as well. The other thing I'll carry because I'm in my 60s is I'll carry this cane. Now, this cane is made out of hickory, I think. Uh, it's not terribly heavy, but it is a little heavy. And I believe I bought it from Cane Masters years ago. I have a couple of them. Uh, this is nothing more than an Escrima stick with a crook on the end. So because it has a crook on the end, it's, you have to deal with it a little differently. The weight is different. The way it functions is different. Sometimes it functions as well at, as a two-handed weapon as it does as an Escrima stick. But nevertheless, because I've studied stick fighting for a long time, this is one of the things I take with me. And besides, I'm getting older and I got a bum knee that bothers me every once in a while. So if I have to walk a long time, sometimes it's a good idea to have a stick. All right, so anyway, that explains what I carry. I hope I answered all of those questions uh, to your satisfaction. If I didn't, let me know. Now, on to the knife. Before I tell you why I like this knife, as from the perspective of a man who's carried a knife for a long time, from the perspective of a man who's learned a lot about knife fighting and has um, served a lot of felony warrants and, uh, and as a, as a uh, bail bondsman and gone and arrested people and all those things that I've had to do with dangerous things, before I tell you why I like this knife, I'm going to show you a video that I use for my students and have used for my students for a long time, in addition to other videos like the Surviving Edge Weapons training video where Dan Inosanto cut, you know, simulates cutting up all the people uh, and attacking police officers and shocking them to death. I want to show you a real incident that happened in Nicaragua several years ago. Uh, this video is pretty grainy, so you're going to have to suffer through that, but I think it's worth watching. As soon as you're done watching it, I'll come back and explain to you and demonstrate for you why I like this knife. Chantalis, Nicaragua. Police try to calm a psychopath stalking his ex-girlfriend and brandishing a 10-inch knife. They surround the suspect, Carlos Echeverria, in an empty lot. Rather than shoot him on the spot, officers try to reason with him. But the jaded madman won't give up the knife. Police are about to move in when suddenly. The suspect savagely slashes one officer after another. Panicky cops finally open fire. But it doesn't stop Echeverria's homicidal rampage. A bullet finally brings him down. Three officers have been badly wounded. They tried to end the standoff without bloodshed and paid a terrible price. So as you can see, knives are extremely powerful and much more than a lot of people assume. There is a lot of training that law enforcement goes through about knives and certainly security people need to go through that with about knives. And my, I've been teaching it for a long, long time. As I said, my former business partner, Mike Ritz, has been teaching it for long, much longer than I have. Uh, and it is a subject that is well learned by people who may ever face these things. Otherwise, you end up stuck like those poor officers did or stabbed or slashed or whatever. Now, I like this particular knife for a few reasons. So let me go over those with you. If you're in a state where you must carry a folding knife, a pocket knife, which is essentially what this is, or you're in a state where the only way you can carry this in your pocket rather than exposed in a sheath where it stands out and everybody looks at you like you've got 10 heads or you're some kind of nut, 
um, then you might want to opt for a folding knife that's just a clip knife like this. In some states, a clip has to be visible. Other states, they don't care. But there are a few things about this one that make it unique in my mind. And one of the reasons I've carried it for probably 10 years, you can see the clip is worn and everything else. One thing, this knife is among many knives I have used over the last 10 or 15 years. This is the only one that is held up as long as it is held up with the clip not bending out of shape or the screws not coming out or something happening with this knife that has caused this knife to fail. And I carry this blade every day without fail, 365 days a year, or whenever I walk out of the house, this knife, along with a gun, is on me. Now, the exceptions are things like I'm getting on an airplane or I'm traveling to Mexico or whatever the case might be. This has been extremely reliable. It's tough as tough could be, and you'll hear it. I mean, it still opens and closes like it's new and locks tighter and tight. I like that. Here's the other thing. I like the width of the blade here. It's not as likely to bend if I'm using it to defend myself in such a way that I might strike a bone. It's not as, e not as likely to break, rather, because I like the fact that it's thick. I also like the fact that it's thick here. It's a very strong steel. It's made extremely well. It also holds an edge very well. I've discovered that, although I've sharpened this one to the point where I've actually sharpened part of the point off, which is why I contacted Optics Planet and ordered another one. <laughs> and I would show it to you if it wasn't for the fact that my wife got it and said, oh, wow, you've been talking about getting me one of these. To which I said, yeah, I was thinking about getting you one of these, and that's why I don't have it. <laughs> now I've got to order another one because I wanted another one. What I want to do with it, and then I'll tell you again why I like it, is I want to blunt this one because I've had it for so long, and then this becomes my practice blade, and the other one is the live blade that I'll carry. So I am going to order another one from Optics Planet. You might want to check them out there. All right, the other thing I really like about that, this blade, is this thing right here. And people will tell you, well, the reason you won't have that is so that you can use your thumb to open the blade one-handed. Well, that's true. But it also serves a better purpose, a different purpose, a, a way for you to get this knife in your hand and ready to go faster than just about any other knife. Let me show you what I mean. This knife is the quickest knife on the draw I've ever carried. Now, where, there you go. Magic. The blade is out. <laughs> exactly how did that happen? I've had students freak out and say, wait a minute, is that like a special knife or something? No, it's not. That little part I showed you catches the edge of my pocket, and there you are. It's drawn. All right, let me show you kind of slowly how it works. You grab the knife, you got to practice the draw. That little part right there I got my finger on is going to catch the pocket and deploy the blade, just like that. So if you have a kind of rearward sweep, or rearward, I can say that sweeping motion, this part right here will catch the edge of your pocket as you draw, and pow, your blade is out, just like that. Magic. Now, you thought I was kidding. I wasn't. I've carried this knife for years because I've trained to let this catch the edge of my pocket as I draw the knife, which means the knife is now open. Gets the knife into play very, very fast. And if you practice the draw, just as you would practice drawing your handgun, you now have your blade in your hand and you can defend yourself. I'll say it again, blades are very, very dangerous weapons. They really are when they're used as weapons. And in the wrong hands, they do a lot of damage. But in the right hands, your hands, the hands of a law-abiding citizen, they can protect your life, if you, particularly if you don't have another tool or the tool you have runs out of ammunition. A couple things I like about blades. They never run out of ammunition. And all they have to do is make contact to cause damage. They're very powerful. Don't forget that. That's why police officers are taught, show me your hands, because they know anything you're going to hurt them with is probably in your hands. And you don't want to be approaching somebody who's standing here like this because you don't know what they have. And suddenly, there's a blade. These things can come out in a flash and do a lot of damage in a flash. I urge you to check out this particular knife. This is the Cold Steel Raja 3. It's handy. It's just the right size. For me, it fits my hand beautifully. I also like the fact that it stops my hand here. So if I have to stab into something, now my hand isn't going to slide over the front of the blade and I'm not going to hurt myself. That's the other thing I didn't mention is the shape of the grip allows my hand to fit in right there. And it works no matter whether you have this hold or this hold. It accomplishes the same thing regardless of how you want to hold the blade. It gives you that protection so you're not, your hand isn't sliding up on the blade. There's a few reasons I really, really like it. I suggest you get it from Optics Planet, primarily because I really like Optics Planet, also because I bought mine there, and I'm going to buy another one, and because they support Gun Guy TV, so I try to support them as well. They send me a lot of things to review. So check them out on Optics Planet. I will put a link in the description. It will not be in the description on YouTube because 
YouTube's worried about uh, having it in the description. So it'll be in the first comment pinned to the top. But otherwise, that's where it'll be. So now you know. Here's the guns I carry. This is, without fail, the knife I carry. It is my favorite knife for the reasons I've expressed. Powerful, strong, super reliable, uber uh, quick to get out of the out of the draw and in your hand where you can work with it and it protects your hand really really well. So I as a defensive blade or even one you're just working with this thing is awesome. Now the one thing I will tell you they don't make it apparently with a serrated edge anymore. Now it's a straight edge. So it depends on what you like. But uh, one way or the other. Great knife. I've been advising my students to get one for a long time and now I'm advising you. All right, one more thing I wanted to let you know and that is that on Patreon I do a twice a month video podcast and on a lot of them, this is the kind of stuff that I do. I generally don't do these on YouTube uh, for public consumption because I, you know, I just don't. I generally do them for uh, YouTube or for a Patreon patrons exclusively, although I figured I'd do this one here because I'm getting so many questions. But if you like this kind of video, I suggest you subscribe and help us out on Patreon. It helps keep Gun Guy TV going and it provides you with additional content that frankly, you're not going to get anywhere else. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful week. Please check us out on these platforms again because you want to make sure you can find us if something happens to us on YouTube. And don't forget that audio podcast. Be safe.